Alright, okay, so we continue now. It's lecture number seven again. Uh, topic is society's expectation. Okay? And society's expectations are sometimes different from what corporations think. Sometimes corporations think that they have no responsibility whatsoever. The only responsibility that they have according to law is strictly profit. The only responsibility of corporations is making money. That's it. However, sometimes society believes, sometimes correctly, sometimes incorrectly, that corporations have responsibility, that they have responsibility to build infrastructure, like build roads, uh, sometimes responsibility to take care of the community, that they have responsibility to keep the environment clean. So, sometimes society believes that corporations got a lot of responsibilities. Unfortunately, what happens a lot of times, not for all corporations, is they go at a particular place, they really damage the environment, they totally poison the local water, they poison the air, a lot of people nearby the corporation get really sick, and then the corporation is gone. Or the corporation just lets them die. This happens quite a lot nearby industry, where you have industry which is contaminating business. It doesn't apply as much to universities. Universities are not damaging the environment. Actually, a lot of neighborhoods would love to see a university nearby because it provides opportunities for local businesses like food. It also raises apartment rentals, the rental price of an apartment. It also raises the price of real estate. A lot of people are willing to invest and buy real estate. So the point is that sometimes society has big expectations from corporations to do good things, but oftentimes corporations don't do a lot of good things because they don't have to, because they are not obligated to, because they don't care. A lot of corporations don't care about anything except for profits. And sometimes, sometimes because managers are bad people. Yes, that happens quite often in the real world. In the real world, managers are greedy. All they want to do is money, a lot of money, like 10 or 20 million US dollar salaries, not enough. They want 20, they want 30, they want 50 million or 100 million. They're ready to steal, they're ready to kill a lot of people, they're ready to destroy uh, the lives of thousands of families just to make one more million because 10 million is not enough for them. Unfortunately, in the real world, there are people like this. All right, so I already covered last time. I'm kind of like stepping back a little bit. Social responsibility is the company's intention, how much they really intend to do the right thing and act in a, let's call it, good way to act in ways that are good for society, meaning in a good way. So that's social responsibility. And some companies are very responsible, but other companies are not at all responsible. And that's part of real life. All right, uh, I covered this last time a little bit. I'm not gonna go through this uh, again, but here is some of the stuff against the outcome. First of all, uh, corporations, when they focus on social responsibility, social being socially responsible 
costs money. You gotta do a lot of spend, a lot of extra money on a lot of extra things. To be socially responsible, to, to do good things costs money. So it violates, number one, violates the mandate of profit maximization. If you want to do good things, you're not maximizing profit. And that's where we get to the question of, okay, the corporation is making $400 million profit a year. Is it better to spend $100 million on good things, providing for society, and profit will be 300 only, but you do a lot of nice good things for other people or not. And that's where, again, we are back to ethics. What's the right thing to do? Are they really supposed to? Well, legally, they're not obligated to do that. Okay, the other reason that, uh, about doing good things is the illusion of purpose. Businesses, any business has got a focus and they got objectives, they got specific goals, they got specific plans, they know what they're supposed to do. One of the problems with doing good things, being nice guys, is that they lose focus and lose purpose. For example, for example, uh, everyone's coming here to study. That's the main purpose. But the one person who sits behind the camera gets a little bit of a distraction. He's distracted between studying and doing good for the benefit of everyone else, including another girl. Okay? So the question is, is it worth distracting him from the purpose of studying, from the purpose of getting education or not. And that's where some of the problem is. Trying to do too many good things for society, you get to lose the main purpose of business, which is to make money. Another reason I already explained is it just costs. A lot of socially responsible things cost money. Building a school nearby costs money. Building a road costs money. Building a plant or system that cleans up the nearby environment costs money. So all of this is costly. Sometimes the problem is that corporations can get too much power and any type of institution in society which gets too much power can get to abuse that power. In other words, to use it for other bad purposes, to use it for evil purposes. We already know in general that governments do that. Governments are not easy to control. Sometimes governments get too much power. They get what's called tyrannical powers. They get to control their people. They get out of control and they get to do things that people don't want them to do, okay? And that's associated with too much power. Sometimes when institutions get too much power, they get to abuse the power and use it for bad things, okay? And governments do this all the time. Many corporations do this all the time. Okay, uh, one of the main arguments against, against doing good things and being socially responsible is that managers, business managers, lack skills to do good things. They never studied this in class. They are not trained to do this. They are trained to make profits. They are trained to run corporations. They are not like churches. Church or churches and other social institutions are responsible for doing social things. That's why we call them social. That's how they get special education, they get special training. Businesses, business leaders, business managers usually 
don't have the skills, don't have the knowledge, okay? And also lack of accountability. Well, one of the problems is that businesses are not really accountable to society. They're only accountable to shareholders. And the only major accountability is profits, generating profits, a lot of profits. So these are some of the arguments that corporations should not get too much into social responsibilities, doing good for society, and all of those things. Of course, there are many more good reasons why they should be. And one of the good reasons is that they should just be good people, okay? Unfortunately, a lot of businessmen are not really good people, don't care about them. All right, I covered a little bit last time quickly about sustainability, and sustainability, the key word in sustainability is long run, or long-term profits, long-term value. So sustainability means doing things in a way that you can continue to do them in the long run and generate the same type of profit. A simple example of unsustainability in life is shooting drugs like cocaine. You do a lot of drugs, you can't do this for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. You're gonna die very soon. It's unsustainable. Another example of unsustainability is trying to make too much profit in the short run and not investing in the long run. So the problem with sustainability is that it requires to think ahead, to think for the future, to sacrifice, to sacrifice short-term benefits and short-term profits for the benefit of the long run. And a lot of times businesses are pressured too much to focus too much on the short term and sacrifice the long term. Well, uh, the example will be, or example will be, what happened in Japan with Fukushima. Uh, it was known in advance that some of their systems were vulnerable. And if, if these people were thinking in the long run, they could have made some further fixes so that we did not have this complete disaster. That will be a simple, short-term step to ensure, we call it, the sustainability of the nuclear industry in Japan, okay? So, sustainability involves doing things the right way and thinking far ahead in order to make sure that 5, 10, 15 years from now will be okay. Another type, not in business, strictly in personal life, in personal life about sustainability is getting more fat and more fat and more fat and more fat, okay? We call this in English obese. Well, that's clearly, and a lot of people know it. I mean, it's not a rocket science, that this is unsustainable. You're not going to be able to live a good, productive, healthy life. You're not gonna have, if you are already 110 kilograms, like many te teenagers are in the United States. Many teenagers are already in the United Kingdom. So being totally fat is unsustainable. By the age of 20 or 25, fat people already have a whole bunch of diseases. They got a whole bunch of health problems. With health problems, they get more to hospital, can't work more. Sooner you get 
financial problems. Later on, you get personal problems in your life. So health problems get complications in your personal life, get complications in your professional life, get a whole bunch of complications. So what does in this case mean sustainability? Sustainability will mean two things in personal life. It means better diet. You eat less, you eat higher quality food, and more importantly, number two, you exercise. Again, whether you like it or not, it is a cost, it is an effort. It's something you gotta do to keep a sustainable long-term life. Meaning that by the age of 40 or 50, you have a good life, you're okay, you're healthy. So that's what sustainability means. Sustainability requires extra investment and extra cost. And many businesses are not willing to do it. Okay? Sustainability requires investment. In your case, sustainability means you study every single class. You come to class, you study, you prepare regularly so that you get a high quality education to make a good progress. All right, factors that lead to ethical and unethical behavior in organization. Okay, set of rules. Okay, let's do this. What is ethics? Ethics is a set of rules or principles. A set of rules, a set of principles that define right and wrong. Essentially, it defines good and bad, okay? It's about right and wrong. It's about good and bad. All right, let's ask a simple question. Suppose you don't exercise on a regular basis. Does it make you a bad person? Well, what's the answer? The answer is, it depends on the ethics. It depends on the point of view. It depends, are you Muslim? Are you Christian? Are you French? Are you British? Oh, it depends. Are you 20 year old or 95 year old? Okay? It depends whether you're Japanese or African. It depends whether you're highly educated or you're some dumb farmer. Actually, most farmers aren't dumb at all. Okay? So, the point is, you can't simply say, oh, he is not exercising, that's really bad, okay? It's bad, but from which point of view? From which judgment, you know? So, ethics requires a judgment. The most common basis for ethics is religion. Christians have one basis of ethics. Jews have a somewhat different. Of course, Buddhists have a different. Hindus have different. Muslims have different. And it's very important to understand that ethics similar to morals can be okay in one culture, meaning it's okay, it's good, it's right, no problem, and can be really bad or wrong in another culture. And that's for you very important to understand. And you know, you see this all the time with foreigners. Foreigners think that some doing something is okay because they've always done it in the West. You look at it here and you judge them for being bad people or doing wrong things or things which are not right or not acceptable. Okay? Without understanding really what's right, what's wrong. Same thing for us. We foreigners, when we come to a foreign country, like I've been here for, was it one month and two or three days? Okay. 
and I come and I do things pretty much the Western way, the way we've always done it, okay? And you sometimes could possibly judge me for being a bad guy, for doing wrong things, without, and again, you judge judging doing wrong things from what? From your point of view. So, ethics means a particular point of view, your point of view, okay? An example of a point of view is, I do something most of you don't like, but for that guy from Germany, it's okay. He doesn't notice the difference, okay? Because he comes from, in this case, we say, different culture. Hello? Different culture. So, ethics is based on religion, is based on nationality, is based fundamentally on culture, is based also on age. You don't expect a two-year-old little baby, right, to do the right things. Oh, it, yeah, I mean, two-year-old, he wants to play, he doesn't really care about it. I mean, you don't expect a two-year-old child to have morals, okay? Well, here's another example. You got a 90-year-old person, very old, very sick, we call in English senile, meaning not really remembering things, not really knowing what's going on, meaning half crazy. That's the way a crazy old person, okay? You don't expect from them ethics. You don't expect a lot of things. So it depends also on the age, okay? So ethics is extremely complicated and difficult. Unlike business, business is easy because you know what business is about. Business is about money. You judge business by profits, meaning the money you make, okay? How much money you make. So, business is easy. You know what it is. With ethics, it's very difficult, very tricky, okay? With business, you make profit, or you don't make profit. So if you're profitable, everybody can see you're profitable. With ethics, half people say it's good, and half people say it's bad, okay? You get controversy about ethics, okay? So we have a number of different views. I went very quickly last time about ethics. And one of the views is called utilitarian view. And the utilitarian view is simply, does it do a good thing? Does it create or generate a result? Does it produce a result? So, ethics is judged and deeds are judged whether they do good things or not. An example will be, maybe, a professor pushing you hard to work, okay? And you don't like it. And it's not really good, okay? Being, yeah, you know, you, you, you gotta study, it's uncomfortable, you don't really like it, but at the end, you actually learn the subject. Example will be, for example, my other course which I'm teaching with some of you guys here, which is accounting. Yeah, pushing hard on accounting, some people may not like it, some people may think uncomfortable, but it's actually really good for you. Accounting could be the most uh, helpful course that you're going to learn here. Whatever you do, whether you go to hotels or restaurants or whatever, airlines, you're going to be able to learn almost anything on the job. The one thing you will never, ever learn on the job is accounting. You can't learn accounting on the job. It just doesn't happen. It's not going to happen. You will need classroom. You will need a teacher. You will need a 
textbook, you will need a lot of time to read through the textbook, you'll need to understand, you'll need to do the exercises, you'll need to have an exam, a grade. Uh, the two of you guys on the back, hello, the two of you, just separate one meter from each other, okay? You've been playing for way too much that little toy, okay? No, separate, separate, just a little bit more. Okay, that's good enough, thank you. All right, what is it now? Kid stuff. So, uh, 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 this is again about feedback according to local culture. Is it okay to just to separate them a little bit? In our Western view, according to Western principles, we say, get the hell out of here, okay? And we kick him out of the classroom, okay? And that will teach him a lesson, a good lesson, okay? So, but is it okay to do this here? Yeah, you see, maybe, maybe not. Depends. If it's a guy, yeah, he can, you know, right? So, you see, it's a judgment, and that's very, very difficult to do. So, the utilitarian view says, yeah, we got to kick him out of his room because it's going to have an effect. It's going to teach him a good lesson, even if it embarrasses him in front of the rest of the class, okay? Even if it embarrasses him, it's okay. Because the result will be he's not going to talk again, okay? So the utilitarian view says it's okay to embarrass somebody, okay? It's okay to make them feel bad. In our Western culture, it's okay to fail a student. Yes, give them F. Let them come again for the class. It's going to teach them a lesson, okay? So this is the utilitarian view and Western culture is okay with it, okay? Because Western culture is focused on results. It's focused on outcome. It is not focused on feelings, okay? It's not focused on to hurt somebody's feelings is not okay. Yeah, it's not okay, but the question is to generate a result. And the result is education. Another type of view of ethics. Again, this depends on you know the mentality. For example, I gotta ask now the dean. Well, for those people that really give me blank exams, do we just give them a little passing grade, or just fail most of them? Okay. Well, that's again partly utilitarian type of view. The right view of ethics is about protecting individuals rights individuals rights are different according to again legal system according to culture according to environment in the arab and muslim world men have very different rights than women women have very 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 few rights in those in that world so, rights depend on society. In America, supposedly people have lots of rights. It depends on the legal system. It depends on the law. But rights also depend on the court system. Sometimes people do have rights by law, but when you go to the court, you cannot enforce it your rights, okay? So the question is like this. Rights. Does this guy over there on the back who keeps talking have the right to education? Does he have the right to stay in class? Well, remember, he's already paid tuition, right? If he's paid tuition, he's got the right to stay. Well, but does he have the right to stay if he's talking, all right? So, in other words, if he's a disturbance in class, so, the question about rights is, what happens when somebody's got rights, but possibly, or the rights of others are violated, okay? So, he has paid, has the rights to stay in class, okay? But she has paid 
too. And she's got the right to proper education without that guy just keep playing and talking and disturbing, okay? The right to good education without disturbance from somebody else. So the rights view of ethics says that people have certain fundamental and legal rights which cannot and should not be violated. In other words, ethics is about protecting people's rights, okay? And doesn't care about feelings, okay? You feel good, you feel bad. No, people got certain rights, okay? Like one of my own rights here is to be in charge, to manage the classroom and to manage classroom discipline, okay? So now we got a conflict, the conflict between my right to manage discipline and his right to be in class, okay? And that's, there's a conflict. So the problem with ethics is when you got conflict of rights, which rights prevail? Which rights are the most fundamental rights? Okay, and finally, the last one is called theory of justice. Again, in theory of justice, this again is a very, very difficult concept of what is justice. And justice is again, we get back to the key word right, doing the right thing, doing what's right. In theory of justice, view simply says that there will be people who are better educated and who will judge for society what's right and what's wrong. So people with better education who will be looking over for the benefit of society and will be judging right from wrong based on society and social need. So the major difference here is in the rights view, you protect the right of the individual. Individual's right is above society. In this view, it is society's right or society's benefit dominates individual's rights. Okay. Again, summarizing ethics, it is difficult and it is tricky because there are many ways to view it. It can be based on different religion, different culture, different ethn ethnicity, okay? Different sex, different age, different everything, okay? And it's difficult to get people to agree on right and wrong about certain things. All right, back to what I was explaining beyond culture, beyond religion, okay? Beyond age. Of course, ethics will be different for a two-year-old, from a 20-year-old, for an 80-year-old person. But some of the basics for ethics and what determines ethical behavior, number one is morals. Morals very difficult. Okay, we don't get too much into morals. You need to basically understand what morals is. And this is again, morals is principles that guide one's personal behavior. Okay, so that's basically morals. The other one is values, okay? And values, some people value a lot money. Other people value a lot friendship. Many people value highly family and brotherhood and parent-child relationship. So values are very, very, very different from person to person. Some people value themselves a lot. They want to have a lot of money. They want to live a good life. Doesn't matter what happens to the others. They don't care about the rest. 
okay? Others' values or value more the people around them, their parents, their friends, and they're willing to sacrifice. So, ethical behavior is driven by one's values a lot. Ethics is driven also by personality. Whether you're a good person, a bad person, whether you like other people or you don't like other people. Again, personality, of course, is related to values. Personality is related to morality. All of these, of course, are related to ethics. These are not separate bits and pieces, okay? Next one is experience. Again, I mentioned, you will have a seven-year-old child will have one type of experience and one ethics. A 20-year-old child's gonna have a very different from 40-year-old, from 60-year-old, okay? Experience, someone 40 years old who's been a housewife, cooking at home all of her life, is going to have one experience. Someone who's been around the world, working in 10 different countries for 25 years. For example, think of a sailor who's been sailing on ships and being in 60 or 80 different countries, okay? And he, who has worked for the Japanese and the Chinese and Americans and the British and the New Zealand, okay? So his work for ships of 10 different countries has visited 60 or 70 different countries. That person's experience is totally different from the Chinese girl who was born in a Chinese village, all she knew in her life from a little childhood is cooking, cooking, cooking. She gets married at the age of 14, a few more children, and then staying at home and cooking. That's a completely different experience, okay? That will determine very different ethics. Again, I'm not saying this one is bad and this one is good, or the other way around, because saying, oh, this is good and this is bad, right? Because very easy to attempt to ask you, which one is better? The sailor who's been, you know, in 100 different countries or the girl that's been staying at home all of her life, okay? And again, it depends on the judgment, on the point of view. It depends on your ethics. If you're a moral person about, let's say, family values, so you value family a lot, it may be that that girl that's taking care of her family is a better person to judge than someone who's been around the world, okay? It depends on the point of view. It also depends on the organization's culture within businesses, within corporations. A particular business will have a particular culture. So, a lot of times the ethical behavior will be shaped. Once you work for two, three, four years in a particular environment, the environment changes you. It changes your personality, it changes your experience, it changes your values, it changes your morality, and eventually, or effectively, it changes your ethics in general. And sometimes ethics is depend on the issues that face. For example, you got a war, uh, you have a child that's bleeding, you need particular medical supplies, okay, and you don't have the money to buy. And if you're a father, sometimes you're just, you have to do what you gotta do, and that's get the gun and go to the pharmacy and say, I need this, this, and this for my child and I don't have money to pay, and I gotta get it one way or another, okay? So, sometimes the circumstances you're in can change your behavior. When people are in desperate need, okay? Whether it's financial, health-wise, their life is under a threat, they can change their ethics for a while, temporarily, okay? So, all of these are factors which determine ethical behavior. And each of these can 
changed over the years, okay? People are not static. They don't have the same behavior. More, more, more. No, no, no. A lot more. Okay? A little bit more, just to be safe, okay? A little bit more. Yeah, next time. Oh, okay? You warn. Okay. So, corporations should encourage ethical behavior, okay? And one way to encourage ethical, well, they should, ideally. Some do, others don't. Some care, many don't. And one way to do it is just a simple code of ethics, okay? Uh, right now, as a brand new employee in this particular institution, I have not yet received a code of ethics. They haven't told me the code of ethics. But I presume it's, I shouldn't be lying. I shouldn't be cheating. I should be treating all students more or less equally, okay? So, I already have a very, very good idea of what should be my code of ethics based on a significant experience, although we should be typically alerted as to the specifics of this institution. Okay, in this institution we encourage you to do this, this and this, and not do that, okay? Uh, sometimes when we have a student who's performing really well, we usually fail them. Well, what, what happens if the student is sick, obviously sick, okay? He's got some real health problem, you can see, they got a special skin disease, okay? And you see, and they just keep itching all the time, okay? But, you know, they're not uh, uh, damaging anyone's other's health, okay? So they're okay, but they got a health problem, okay? Do we just fail them or we don't fail them, okay? It's easy to fail the lazy student who just doesn't do anything. But that kid is trying, he's a good kid, okay? But he's just sick, he's got some health problems that he, he, it's easy to see, okay? For example, someone can break their leg and they have difficult time coming to class, okay? So they miss the last three, four, or five weeks, okay? So these are ethical behavior. We punish the lazy kid, we just give him F. But what about the good kid who broke his leg or has got some other health problems, okay? What do we do in this particular case, okay? You see? Uh, so these are ethical issues which we should typically get a code of ethics. But if we don't get a code of ethics, I make a judgment and I usually just go and ask my boss, hey boss, but it's a kid, it's whatever the story is and you know, usually if there's a health problem, some other issue, the, well, what, what do I do? And my boss will say, well, do this or don't do that, or she's going to say, well, let me ask my boss, okay? So, code of ethics usually tells you what's right and what's wrong, the things to do and the things not to do, okay? It should also provide ethical leadership. Managers should simply provide ethical leadership. And there should be some basic offering, uh, offering for basic training, okay? Businesses should do some basic training. Okay, let's see. Ethical training, some corporations do it, most corporations don't. Ethical training costs money. You don't want to waste money on ethics, okay? where you're supposed to make money, you know. Just training ethics is just too much waste of money, okay? So many businesses don't actually bother to offer. It's not part of the business, okay? When you have a little restaurant, you're gonna do ethics? Well, most likely you won't do ethics at all, okay? And you got some uh, yes and no about ethics. Let's see what else we have. Uh, workforce is changing. Okay, one of the fundamental changes 
in the workforce today and you get to see is diversity. The workforce gets, in many cases, younger and younger people get to work. You also get a lot older people. In universities, it's not uncommon to see 73 or 75 year old professors to teach, okay? You also get a lot more diversity in terms of gender. Very, very diverse in terms of race, especially when you go to the Middle East. When you go to the Middle East, you have Africans and Europeans and lots of Asians. You get all sorts of races. You also get big people and small people, okay? Different physical attributes with different type of dress and different personality. So, the modern workplace is becoming very, very, very diverse and sometimes managers have difficult time handling diversity. The example that I give is when I was teaching at another university, they have their own culture. The national culture is its own, the university culture is its own. They did not tolerate diversity, okay? And they, from our Western point of view, Western professors weren't treated very well. Meaning, they didn't even care about us. They didn't care about anything, basically, related to Western professors, to the point where most Western professors would leave the university after one semester or after two semesters or as soon as they find a job, okay? So, management could not deal effectively with diversity. Well, they didn't even care about diversity, okay? And as a result, it was a private university. As a result, business was suffering, meaning teachers were no good, teachers also didn't care. Next semester, the professor leaves, you gotta bring in a new one, so you got a big turnover. Every semester, one-third of the professors leave and they bring in so big turnover provides for unstable environment so diversity you also got a workforce diversity that's fairly straightforward the types of diversity age gender race ethnicity disability also religion religion is very different in the middle east you got lots of Christians, there are lots of Hindus, there are lots of Buddhists, Muslims, okay? Well, you don't get very many Jews, but that's a different topic altogether. But you got a lot of religions and so on. Continue. And which are the problems, professional problems today? The biggest problem today is the so called work life balance. Work life balance means too much work, the problem of too much work, spending most of your time so much on work that you got little time for yourself, little, little time for your personal life, little time for your family. And this is very important in general in business. It's very visible here in Thailand for example, when you go to a massage, when I go to a massage parlor, what I hear, say, oh, we work 12 hours a day. They say, well, when do you have your time for yourself? They say, we don't. We work 12 hours a day, we sleep another eight, we eat, and there's no time left for anything else. So there is no balance between work and between life. Meaning, there is, they don't have any Life. They don't have any personal life. Okay? You just work, 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 and then more work. Six days a week. Okay, that's not too different in major US corporations. In major business and corporations, when you gotta work, you work also on Saturday, and you work also on Sunday, you're gonna be working seven days a week, maybe ten hours, maybe twelve hours, maybe fourteen hours, and that's one of the biggest problems. Another major change in the workplace is contingent workforce. 
I was a contingent worker. Contingent means only if things change, only if there is a need. Example is when I was going back home, I was teaching as a visiting professor in Macau. And I was a visiting professor, contingent worker. If they need me, they call me, I get on the plane and go and teach, okay? And if they don't need me, they don't call me, okay? So I'm basically on call, okay? And I usually don't have any other work. I just stay at home, do other things, whatever I like to do. So they send me an email, hey, can you cover this course? I said, sure. Uh, on this, from this to this date, I said, okay. I arrange for my airplane ticket and just get there. And that's it. That's all the rest of it. That's contingent workforces. And finally, there are major big differences from generation to generation <coughs> in terms of morals, in terms of ethics, but also in terms of technological capabilities in terms of skills related to computers, to Google, to searching, to all sorts of other things. All right, let's finish with this chapter today. Uh, take about 10 minutes and then we continue. Camera.